So hello um, everyone and welcome to this webinar on Blue Black Rock Physics version 1.0, uh, Quantitative Interpretation for Patrol. My name is Mark O'Brien from Blue Black and I thank you for your participation. So just a, a quick note on today's session, we're using a GoToMeeting hosted presentation. Uh, you should see a panel like this on the left, which you can minimize by clicking the arrow, click it again to bring the panel back. Um, you can display the uh, window as a full screen or window by the view menu. And by default, everyone is muted, so please submit any questions you have into the text dialog, uh, and we'll do our best to answer you as we go along. Um, we'll share some of the Q&A that are coming at the end of the session. Um, the webinar has been recorded. You'll all be provided a link within 24 hours. Uh, please feel free to distribute as you require. Uh, finally, uh, the, web, the recording will also be um, posted on the website. So the agenda for this session is to uh, provide a brief introduction to uh, Rock Physics and the Blueback Rock Physics plugin uh, and what is unique uh, to our implementation. Um, I'll, also, I'll introduce the, the Rock Physics tool suite uh, and introduce some of the QI workflows you now have available directly in Patrol. I'll also introduce the Advanced Data Analysis plugin, Blueback Geodata Investigator, and how your Rock Physics data analysis um, can be integrated with this plugin. We'll then spend the majority of the session in a live demo. Uh, final, we'll uh, come back to PowerPoint to finalize uh, with a summary. I mentioned the licensing and how to obtain evaluations. Uh, and then lastly, share some of the Q&A that have come in. Uh, just to let you know as well that this session um, is going to be sort of more like 35, 40 minutes. Um, as opposed to the half an hour that was uh, has been advertised. So the field of rock physics uh, represents the link between qualitative geological parameters and quantitative geophysical measurements. Um, increasingly over the last decade, rock physics has become an integral part of quantitative seismic interpretation um, and stands out as a key technology in petroleum geophysics. Quantitative interpretation allows us to relate rock properties to seismic response using calibrated models. And ultimately, the application of rock physics can reduce exploration risk and improve reservoir forecasting. So fully integrated into Patrol, this dynamic, powerful, and easy to use plugin provides multi-domain quantitative interpretation. The tools can be run on well, seismic, model, and numeric inputs. Um, our collection of multi-domain QI tools can be combined with Blueback Geodata Investigator plugin, uh, which allows additional advanced data analysis and QC. Um, Blueback Rock Physics contains a suite of tools um, that can be combined in many different orders to perform a variety of rock physics based workflows. So what's unique um, about our rock physics offering? Um, our implemented implementation is Patrol native. The tool is built in Patrol. Uh, runs within Patrol and the tools work directly on Patrol data. The tools where possible have built-in QC plots. Uh, this allows one to plot inputs, edit the variables and process parameters, and then QC the results um, before actually committing to writing the output. And the tools where possible are multi-domain, so they work on well log, property models, seismic data, and also run in numeric mode. Um, the tools are all workflow enabled. Um, just bear with me one second. I just need to. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so the tools are all workflow enabled. And so the tools and processes can be structured uh, to build a patrol workflow with the outputs from one process fed to the input of another job and then run iteratively. Um, to investigate parameter uncertainty. So these workflows also provide um, an audit trail uh, and make it possible to standardize workflows um, across the company. So Blueback Rock Physics contains a suite of tools um, that can be com uh, combined in many orders to perform a variety of rock physics workflows. For example, forward modeling, uh, investigating tuning effects, property prediction, property model validation, um, again, all of these individual process components within each workflow can be run iteratively in the Patrol Workflow Manager uh, to allow you to understand parameter uncertainty around the inputs you're using um, in each job. So the forward modeling workflow, uh, which we're going to look at more detail in the demo, uh, allows you to create rock physics models. 
uh, use these to investigate the effects of changes to lithology and through variations in V-shell, porosity and pressure. Uh, you can then run fluid substitutions using Gassman's equations and dry rot modelling, see the effects of the variations in fluid content. And you can then create impedances um, to compare, for example, with your inversion data or create synthetics to compare with your seismic data. Um, so the standard rock physics forward modeling workflow is now possible directly within um, Patrol. Um, you can also investigate tuning effects by creating 2D and 3D tuning wedges to measure the tuning thickness and other tuning effects. Um, by creating rock physics models that are parameterized on your wall log data, you can convert your model properties, V-shell, uh, porosity, water saturation into VP, VS and Rho. Once you have these, you can make impedances uh, and create synthetics to allow you to check your property model or geo model against seismic data. So this opens up an extra validation set of your property model um, that you can now run in control. Uh, finally, another example workflow that's now possible. So the tools can be combined uh, to allow you to run property prediction and Bayesian classification, for example. Um, so that was just an introduction to just four or five of the QI workflows um, but many more are possible through the suite of tools you now have available um, with Blueback Rock Physics. So the accompanying data analysis required as, as part of your QI workflow can be run with the Blueback Geodata Investigator, or GDI, uh, as I already referred to it, an advanced, data, uh, an advanced cross domain data analysis plugin for Patrol that is the perfect accompaniment to Blueback Rock Physics. So five custom plot windows, multi domain data analysis tools, allow you to understand the data you're utilizing uh, in the rock physics workflow uh, and also work analysis of the outputs. So GDI allows um, dynamic integration between data selection in a plot window and native patrol space and it opens up various classification workflows and rock physics models can be overlaid in GDI plots to allow parameterization of the model and contour density plots can be created and converted to probability density functions um, for use within the Rock Physics plugin. Uh, there are, of course, many other new uh, data analysis workflows uh, now possible um, with GDI. Okay, so I'm going to jump into um, Patrol. Okay, so um, this is, is, is uh, going to be a brief overview. It's not possible to cover all of the functionality in this demo. Um, so it's designed to give you an idea of how the tools look and feel, how they can be structured to allow complete QI workflows to be executed in Patrol. So first thing, I'm going to come to this little icon here, which is our, our Blueback Home icon. So you can see the Rock Physics tools here. Um, they kind of sit alongside our other, pl other plugins that are available under Blueback Home. So we have our seismic reservoir characterization um, tools, geophysics toolbox, uh, geology, reservoir engineering, project management, and our, also our well test um, plugin. So all of the most of the um, plugins we have kind of reside here in Blueback Home. I'm just going to reopen the Rock Physics tools uh, from this little drop down here. So we get to um, just specifically our uh, Rock Physics tools. So what we're going to do um, is work through the forward modeling workflow. Um, so that's the process of creating and parameterizing rock physics models, uh, converting petrophysical properties to elastic properties using uh, the models, running fluid and lithology substitutions, creating impedances, and finally creating synthetics to compare to our seismic data. So we're going to start with this tool, the Geodata Equation Creator. So this allows um, various uh, standard rock physics models to be created. Each model uh, created is added to the input tree. Uh, and more than one model of each type can be created, allowing them to be parameterized differently. Um, so for each model, we have a kind of description of the model, uh, the appropriate reference where necessary. So I'm just going to choose to create um, a selection of these, these models. We'll just give them a suffix. Um, click OK. And you'll see that they've been written um, here to the input tree into this rock physics model um, folder. So if I open the settings for one of these particular models and come to the parameters, um, on the right we have a QC plot for this particular model. On the left we have the variables to allow the parameterization of this model. Um, so first of all we can select a mineral set. 
So this can be any existing uh, mineral set you have defined, or you can click to create a new one. Um, so to create a new set, we need to specify the data. So for our well log, for shale, we're going to take our V-clay. And for our quartz, we can choose to make this complement. Um, so that means anything that's not shale is going to be quartz. You can also add in model data um, at this stage. So for my um, shale, I can take the corresponding V-clay parameter. So this allows you to use this model with grid data uh, in subsequent processes. You can also change the minerals in the set. So, for example, add in some smectite, uh, sp play, play around with bulk modulus, uh, density, etc. So we'll just give this a name. And click OK. So this then becomes available to select uh, as the mineral set. So next we can um, set up our fluid data. Again, you can sort of take any um, pre-existing fluid sets you have. Or click to create a new one. Um, so under the property tab, we have we can manually set the bulk modulus, density, VP for oil, water, gas. And these manual inputs allow you to um, duplicate existing fluid models from elsewhere. You can also choose the type of gas mixing or set up with Basel Rhine fluid properties. In a similar way to the mineral data, we need to specify our data. So we just take our water, oil, and gas saturation logs. Um, you can then sort of come to play around with the bulk modulus, change the gas mixing, and kind of see the, the dynamic uh, updates in this QC plot on the right. So we'll just give this a name as well, um, demo1, click OK, <clears throat> and that fluid set then becomes available um, to parameterize this model with. Um, so the next thing I'd like to show you is how you can also continue the parameterization um, by overlaying this, this rock physics model into a GDI plot window. Um, so what we have here uh, is a GDI plot window. Um, so GDI works by uh, coming to insert uh, GDI investigation. So an investigation is a, a sort of a grouping of data that you want to uh, work in an analysis with uh, in GDI. So for these particular wells, I've loaded VP, VS, uh, AI, etc., a whole bunch of well logs. You can also choose to bring in any other uh, multi-domain data into a, an investigation for analysis in the same space. So once you've loaded data to an investigation, you come to Window, a new blue back histogram, scatter plot, cross plot, matrix plot, parallel coordinate window. So we have five new windows. This is a scatter plot here. Um, so just to show you through the, the, the window quickly, we have tools for, uh, if you make a selection, you can export to a spreadsheet, save as a point set, so a 3D point set in native control space. Um, tools for controlling which dimensions you have displayed, tools for controlling data visibility, um, choosing the coloration of the data, tools for contouring, or creating contour density plots. Um, we have both filters and classified regions. This means you can make a selection of data, assign a discrete code, and then create a point set in 3D space or a, a classified well log. Um, so we have the equations. So we can turn on the, um, the model we were looking at previously, friable sand. I'll just turn off uh, the other ones I have displayed. We have tools for adding patrol functions, so you can digitize a function and add a spline, uh, adding annotations. That's a nice context menu for turning on a point density plot, um, setting the sort of look and feel of the plot, creating filtered well logs, indicated well logs. So you can see quite a rich, um, uh, a rich um, data analysis tool uh, for patrol. So what I'm going to do is just lose the legend and the color bar. I'll just squeeze this over to the right a little bit. Come back into the settings for this friable sand. Uh, then we'll start to sort of work a little bit more with parameterization. So, for example, we can start to play with the um, coordination number. So you can see the updates uh, to the model happening here in the QC plot. But here it's overlaid with the data, allowing you to um, uh, sort of find that relationship in the well data that we can subsequently apply to the seismic. Um, we can also play with the shear reduction and the critical porosity, for example, add in different fluid sets, and sort of see how the model uh, dynamically updates whilst overlaid with the relevant well data. There's also tools for um, 
controlling the style so you can turn on various points um, choose which lines you have displayed um, label the data label the points as well um, so again this is parameterization allows you to find a relationship from the raw data which we can then apply to a seismic um, so moving on to the next step in the forward modeling process um, which is to apply these rock physics models uh, and establish relationships to calculate elastic properties so I'm going to come to the next tool which is the geodata transformer so the geodata transformer uh, uses the rock physics models which is built and prioritized uh, to transform data from one domain to another so this allows you to take data for example from the petrophysics domain and turn into elastic properties or calculate the calculate vs from vp or populate grid models with vp vs and rho from other grid parameters so if i choose to um just build this so we'll take our raw data we'll choose a um, particular rock physics model so for this model um the input that it wants is uh, porosity and v shell and it's going to calculate vp vs and rho uh, from our inputs uh, using the using the rock physics model uh, which we can then push these outputs through the, the forward modeling so push them into fluid substitution creating our synthetics and ultimately comparing to our seismic so you can choose to um, sort of use this rock physics model if you know a fascist log equals a certain code or if a well log uh, meets certain criteria you can also use a second model if the first model breaks down which has an additional uh, input required so for this, we'll just take our um, porosity and uh, beak plate. For the um, friable sand input, it wants pressure and pros uh, critical porosity, but we're just going to use the model parameters for that. So if we click um, OK to, uh, to populate this plot, so what we have here is an inbuilt QC plot um, of AI um, against BPVS. Uh, with one curve generated from each of the rock physics models we've uh, used as input here. And um, so this is allowing us to QC the outputs before we commit to generating them. Um, so this is this QC plots are kind of built with the GDI technology, so you have similar sort of context menus, again tools for controlling data visibility and coloration. Um, so again where possible these QC plots, plots QC plots have been added um, to allow you to QC the, the outputs before you um, build them. So we can also add in our rock physics model for example. So you can see we have a very well conditioned data in this particular project. So if you're happy with these transformations you just um, click OK to build them, uh, run them to the input tree. So using the geodata equation creator we've taken our petrophysical properties and turned them into elastic properties. Um, again, just to emphasize that all, all of the tools that are possible are multi-domain. So we've just run our well data through this, but you can also run this with numeric inputs, uh, model and um, seismic data. Um, so the next stage in the forward modeling workflow is to take our uh, VP, the S and row outputs and run them through the fluid substitution. So the fluid substitution uses um, Gassman's equations to replace the fluid uh, content in the rock. It allows various what-if scenarios to be played out, replacing existing initial fluids with various combinations of hydrocarbons uh, and seeing the effect that has on um, the rock properties. So again, this can be run in multi-domain mode. We're going to run it with well data this time. Uh, so we select our wells, our VP, VS, our row, porosity, our mineral and fluid sets in the initial to dry tab. In dry to final, we specify our top reservoir contacts. And if I click to auto update plot, again, we have a QC of the um, outputs. So I'm just going to change this to AI SS space. There's um, sort of various predefined templates you can use for the QC plot. You can also build your own uh, X by controlling the XYZ axis. I'm just going to take some of this data out so it's a little bit cleaner and also color by uh, fluid in this case. Um, so now we can start to change the final flows for this particular well. 
But before we do, it's possible to take a copy uh, of this original data as it currently stands to use as a reference, as it were. Uh, so we can toggle here. Um, we'll just call this reference. Make it black. Click OK. Um, so we'll just take this out. Take the copy of the, the well we were just looking at. We'll change this to um, have an open circle. And then we'll overlay the well that we're going to run these substitutions in. Um, okay, so if we change the final oil, for example, and also the gas, just knock those down. Um, so you can see the if I add in a legend. So we have our um, the, the the solid points are the the uh, the data that's had the final fluids changed, um, and the open circles are the, the reference data or the initial um, starting point we had. So again, we can sort of clearly see the effect that these final fluid substitutions are having um, on the data. So if we're happy with that, we click Apply to create our VP, VS, and Row uh, final logs. Um, or you can come uh, into Advanced mode, which opens up the um, dry rock modeling. Um, so gas mode equations are kind of sensitive and quickly break down in, in non-porous and shaley sands. Um, so Rob Sim in 2007 introduced a method to deal with this known as dry rock modeling. So for a given porosity, the pore stiffness can be modified to give more realistic results. Um, so we have a plot here on the top of um, pore stiffness, which is K dry over K min against um, porosity. Um, and then underneath we have porosity against pore stiffness ratio. So um, let me take these off. So, um, so these outliers down here are the points that um, can cause gas mass equations to misbehave or start to break down up here as well. So the two things we can do about this, um, we can specify a, a lower and upper bound. So let me make these red so you can see them. Okay, so we've, we've specified two boundaries, an upper and lower boundary. Um, and if I uh, choose to, to update, you'll see that the points um, that were lying outside the boundary line have essentially been moved up and um, onto that lower boundary. So if I change this again to uh, 10, click update, you'll see the line move up to uh, 10 and again all the points outside that line have been moved up. Um, the other method for dealing with the outlying points is to add a fill, use a filter. So if I just update this and view all. So what you can do is to make a selection, so add filter, add freehand filter, uh, make a selection of the sort of some of the more valid data. You can choose to um, add uh, a best fit line to the data selection we've, we've made. And then when I click update, all of the points within that selection will be moved onto that uh, particular line. So this, in effect, um, allows us to change um, the pore stiffness. So if we go to the drive final tab, um, we can now specify our oil, water, gas for each of the two legs, such that we can have three fluid mixing if we want. Um, you can also specify a final fluid set for our, sorry, a fluid data for the final fluid set. So, for example, if you want to correct for invasion, you can do that. Um, lastly, there's a whole range of outputs in advanced mode. Um, so if I select some additional outputs, come back to the QC plot, um, you'll see those three outputs I, I selected have been added to, um, are available in the QC plot to allow them to be QC'd again before you commit to generating them. Okay, so that was the um, fluid substitution process. The next step in the forward modeling workflow is to generate impedances. So the impedance tool allows us allows impedances and other elastic properties to be QC'd and calculated. Um, again, it runs on multi-domain mode, um, and again has another built-in QC plot. Um, so we're going to again just configure this with our well data, um, VP, VS, and row, and click to update. Okay, so uh, basically taking our VPV as in row and calculating these elastic properties, which we can um, QC uh, in the plot. Um, these are all calculated uh, based on these equations you have uh, in the help here. 
So just to show you this in uh, one of the other domain modes, so in numeric mode, um, so it's possible to take uh, a set of numeric values, so take a multi-range, so VP from 4,000 to 4,200 every 20. Same for VS and row. And if I come into advanced mode, and I choose to select uh, EI2 term, theta controls become available, so 0 to 60 every 20. If I select EEI, uh, the chi angle controls become available, so minus 90 to 90 every 30. So I just click apply to these numeric to run these numeric inputs through. Um, and what we have in the message log, so we have um, the range of inputs, so VP, 4,000 to 4,200 over 20. And the corresponding numeric um, outputs have been uh, written to the message log. Um, so again, also if you run this with a model input, um, so we're creating impedances in the model, so that's an important stage in the model validation process that we mentioned earlier uh, during the introduction. So the final uh, stage in the forward modeling process is to uh, build your synthetics. Okay, so the synth synthetics tool creates in, uh, synthetic seismic data from VP, VS and density inputs. Um, so we'll just configure this again, take our wells, VP, VS, and row. We choose a reflectivity type. Uh, so we have the sort of standard offerings, Akko Richards, Shuey, uh, Bortfield. Um, you can choose to uh, create pre-stack traces. Um, take 20. And then you choose your wavelet, so a Ricker or an existing wavelet if you have the extracted one, or an Ormsby filter. Select which well you want to look at in the QC plot, select which tops, and then we click to auto-update. Um, so unfortunately this is where my project let me down slightly. I don't have any um, seismic for direct comparison uh, at this stage, I'm afraid. Um, but just to show you through the QC tracks, we have a, an AI log for this particular well we displayed. This can also be um, an e an impedance, an elastic impedance log at specified uh, angle. And um, we have the reflectivity um, taken from the well log, so we can change these uh, change between the different reflectivity types, kind of see um, the impact that they have. We can see the wavelet, um, which is just dropped off. And the next track is the synthetic, so we can uh, apply a sort of gain to the the, the um, reflectors. Or we can choose to uh, run with our pre-stack or not, uh, choose to swap between the different um, wavelets, so uh, Ricker and Ormsbeger. Um, so as I mentioned, I don't have any seismic, I'm afraid, um, but if you did, you would come into the seismic tab, uh, just add your seismic volume, and then they would be displayed um, along this particular well uh, in, this part, in this panel. So the synthetic, the synthetic results we have here complete the standard um, forward modeling rock physics workflow, um, which we run entirely within the patrol platform. Um, so to recap, uh, we've generated elastic properties from the rock physics models. We defined and parameterized. We run fluid substitutions using Gassman's equations, created impedances, and finally created synthetics to compare with your seismic data. So the standard forward modeling workflow, all in patrol. Um, so this workflow has been, been run as individual processes so far. What I'd like to show you next is the blocky um, 1D modeling process, which is essentially the forward modeling process we've been through, but with all the processes linked together in one dialog. So to run this tool, we select a well, some tops, um, pertinent logs, and click OK to open the fast forward modeling panel. So, um, yeah, so the tool allows you to run the basic 1D or forward modeling workflow on a single well with all the processes dynamically, dynamically linked together, allowing you to edit each variable and see immediate feedback uh, in the synthetic. So the process uses um, blocked data, which has been calculated here um, between the well tops. So a single block per uh, zone. And we do have another tool which can be used to find your optimum blocking position for a given well, the optimized log blocking tool. 
which we'll look at um, shortly. So the blocky 1D modeling as well can also be run um, into the uh, blocky 2D um, and 3D tool. Um, so you can see we have nine different blocks or litho fascias in this plot. Uh, we also have all the salient um, QC tracks, so VP, VS, Rho, AISI, reflectivity coefficient, the wavelet, synthetic, the AVA class, the seismic academy, and the residual. Um, so what the tool has done, um, so based on your role top, it's been through and created uh, a litho fascist class for each zone. Um, so the class stores the mean and standard deviation for VP, VS and Rho uh, and any other required data types. It also stores a cumulative distribution function and several um, cross-correlation coefficients. So these lithofash LFCs or lithofash classes can be used to create probability density functions using the PDF tool, um, which can also be used in turn to perform Bayesian classification. Okay, so this is the uh, lithofashes class. So what we can do um, is to start to play around with all of the settings for each class uh, or block uh, and run them through the forward modeling process. So I'm just going to zoom vertically uh, down to these zone blocks. Um, select a, a zone, for example, and then start to, um, so this is, is this zone here. Start to change the, the, the depth on that particular um, zone. You can see the, the, the zone moving, it's running through, changing the reflectivity coefficient, giving you feedback uh, in the synthetic. So similarly, we can run a lithology substitution, for example. Um, so you can take a particular zone, choose, yes, we want to make some changes, choose a particular uh, model, and then change the V shell, for example. Again, you can see the, the effect this is having on the, the VP and VS, and then again, sort of through to the synthetic. Uh, we can run fluid substitutions, so for example I can introduce a, a gas and oil context. Um, and see how they have uh, impact uh, on, in the synthetic. Um, and change around, we play with change the final fluids as well. And sort of see how they're feeding through into the synthetic. Um, so we also have the impedances and synthetic setups that you can work through and configure and have uh, sort of instant feedback. So the idea is that you play around with all of these inputs and quickly fast forward model what inputs give you the best match to um, the seismic. So it's very nice to have all these QC plots in one place. And we're down in the left hand corner we have a selection of other um, QC plots. So we can swap these into the main display. Um, so we have a, let me add in the legend, so we have our VP, VS um, plot for each lithofascist class. Um, same for impedances, we have our AVO um, QC plot, which is angle against reflectivity for each of the interfaces. So for example, again, you can sort of take it in and out of your contacts or play around with the fluid substitution and see this, the updates refle reflected in this particular plot. Um, <clears throat> lastly, we have um, intercept gradient. Um, plotted and coloured by uh, AVO class. Um, so as we, as we have all of the statistical information within our Lindo fascist class, um, this allows us to run a uh, Monte Carlo simulation. Um, so if the Monte Carlo simulation is, is selected, uh, statistical data from the LFC will be used to simulate multiple stochastic data points um, in the QC plots. So you'll see rather than having one point per block, we have multiple um, points um, to see how the data is distributed in a, in a Monte Carlo sense. So also just to show you that the outputs from this, these litho fascist classes and the blocking model are all saved um, to the input tree. So the blocking modeling uh, process creates just a single block per zone. However, if you want to understand that the optimal number of blocks required to represent raw data, um, this can be calculated and understood using the optimized log blocking tool. So this tool uh, uses a synthetic um, to uh, create a seismic trace to help find the optimum number of blocks when blocking well log data. 
and gives a greater control on the blocking than we were uh, looking at previously. So if we choose a particular well, we'll just take our VP, VS and row again. Choose a particular, uh, we'll take a Ricker and we'll click to update. So you can see, you have a sort of interactive slider, so you can increase the number of blocks. You see the, them uh, updating on the QC plot here. Um, so you can see, for example, when we get beyond, say, whatever that is, 100 blocks, uh, there's not much more change in the cross-correlation coefficient. Therefore, it's probably not worth introducing um, more than 100 blocks. Or you can sort of make your decision based on what, what you consider is such a satisfactory um, correlation coefficient. Uh, to to uh, make a decision on the number of blocks you want to use to block the data. Okay, so one last tool for the demo is the blocky modeling, uh, sorry, tuning wedge 2D, 3D. So the tuning wedge tool allows tuning effects to be investigated. Um, firstly, it blocks the selected well logs um, between the selected markers creating a blocked model, as we've seen previously. And the middle block surfaces are then pinched out um, to create a tuning wedge. So by default, uh, simple two wedges can be created um, in advanced 3D mode. Uh, 3D wedges can be, uh, can be made. This allows um, properties to be varied in the third dimension. In effect, creating multiple tuning wedges, um, allowing sensitivity of other parameters in a wedge model to be investigated. So I just have a quick set of windows here. So we have um, this is the 2D wedge that was created. And then you can see between this middle block, the surfaces have been pinched out um, to create uh, the input to build this 3D uh, tuning wedge. So lastly, just two more tools um, in brief, just by way of introduction. We have um, uh, the ability to create um, probability density functions. Uh, so this describes the relative likelihood of a variable to take on a given value. Um, the PDFs are constructed from the LFCs we were looking at earlier in the blocky 1D modeling. Um, these can in turn can be fed into the Bayesian classification. So this is a tool for um, performing statistical classification of data. It uses the predetermined PDF to describe the likelihood of a class of bashes, for example. So in this case, for a given AI SI value, um, what's the probability that it belongs to the orange or pink um, value? So the output for this, uh, from this tool essentially, is a classified um, seismic volume or well log containing the probability of different fashies uh, in this case, for example. So that concludes the run through uh, in brief some of the tools that we currently have available in the Rock Physics uh, toolbox. Um, I hope you found it interesting. And um, just before we leave Patrol, um, I'd just like to show you something we mentioned earlier, the fact that all of the uh, Rock Physics tools are workflow enabled. Um, so this is a unique implementation of the QI workflows, which allows you to chain all the steps together feed the output from one process to the next, and then run multiple iterations and workflows, allowing you to investigate parameter uncertainty. So here we have an example of the forward modeling workflow, workflow we were looking at uh, previously, um, which when you run, it will run iterations with a, a 10 degree uh, increment in oil saturation um, that will be then fed through to generate synthetic, and then loop back, change the oil saturation by 10, 10% and rerun uh, a loop. Um, okay, so that's it for the demo. I'm just going to jump back to um, PowerPoint to summarize. Um, so Blueback Rock Physics provides integrated multi-domain QI workflows uh, in Patrol. Workflow-enabled processes allow automatic repetition of the QI workflows to allow parameter sensitivity uh, analysis avoiding arduous repetition. Inbuilt QC plots um, allow the, the outputs to be visualized before committing to creating the outputs. And the Rock Physics tools combine perfectly with Geodata Investigator um, to allow advanced multi-domain QC of both inputs and outputs. 
So the Rock Felix plugin is available now uh, for free evaluations. Please contact us on sales at blueback-reservoir.com if you'd like to take a look at the tools firsthand. Um, we're ready to provide installers, licenses, further demonstrations. We will, of course, fully support you through your evaluation and even offer Rock Felix consultancy services um, to help you get the most from your data. The cost of the plugin is 19,000 US for 12 month or 36,000 for a 24 month subscription. There are, of course, flexible models based on volume, license volume, or existing portfolio subscriptions. Um, so please contact us on sales at blueback.reservoir.com um, to find out more. Okay, so I'm just going to try and break out some of the Q&A um, that have come in. Okay, so um, yeah, the flag fluid or flag consortium models. Um, we know a lot of people have used these, um, but as yet it's not been implemented uh, within our toolkit. However, um, it is possible to take the values from the flag fluid models uh, and manually input the relevant uh, BP bulk module, bulk module density uh, into the fluid set, as we saw um, in the demo. Um, yeah, we support uh, Patrol. The plugin can be installed for Patrol 2012 and 2013. Um, yeah, in the fluid substitution process as well, um, the uh, we haven't implemented anisotropy or heavy oil substitutions. Um, we just introduced Gassman's fluid substitutions and dry rot modeling uh, in our implementation at the moment. Um, just another note, we'll also be introducing um, at the start of the demo when we work through the rock physics models and uh, build it, adding them to the input tree from a predefined list. Um, we'll be opening that up to allow you to build user-defined um, uh, rock physics models. Um, yeah, we'll also be hopefully uh, we're thinking about implementing 4D modeling uh, in the next release. Um, okay, so I hope that's answered most of the questions. If there's anything we haven't answered, um, I have all the questions uh, documented and we'll get back to you by email. Um, so with that, um, i just say uh, thank you all for your participation. Um, if you'd like to find out more or uh, have any other questions that you think of, uh, please send them through to sales at blueback.com. All right, thank you very much for your time uh, and goodbye for now.